थैंक गॉड कोरोना आ गया तो वो हट गए दे शुड हैव बीन रिमूव्ड ऑन डे वन दिस वॉज सच अ सैड स्टेटमेंट आई वॉज स्टंड सो स्ट्रीट वीटो इज विनिंग नथिंग कैन बी मोर डिफीटिंग सेल्फ डिफीटिंग फॉर अ कंट्री एन मुलायम सिंह ऑर्डर फायरिंग एट कार सेवक लेटर ऑन ही वॉज प्राउड ऑफ इट गवर्नमेंट बिकम्स इवन मोर लेट्स बोल्ड वेन इट इज द हिंदू ऑन द स्ट्रीट्स Namaste subscribe to our channel to stay updated with our regular videos like the video and do leave a comment below so youtube recommends this to more like minded souls and do share our videos with others to help spread the message i have two questions one when ca was passed we had people sitting and protesting in shaheen bag for 3 months fortunately corona came and that could be stopped right to some extent <laughs> see this is again it was uh... the mistake the cowardly act of our government yeah yeah and we have now somehow internalized that as thank god corona aa gaya to wo hat gaye <laughs> they should have been removed on day 1 uh now that we know that our government will not remove us why don't we start protesting for the freeing of temples <laughs> <laughs> in kalka mandir <laughs> why can't we do that that's the first question and what prevents us as a society from taking decisions like that that's point number 1 point number 2 i think ashish ji talked about funding we have a lot of organizations on the hindu fold who have lot of funding with them what is the way to best channelize this funding to riyam hinduism in different ways and this is a question to the entire panel and also vamshi ji from a perspective of how to channelize all this to actually get our media on our side get our message out in the right way so this is to Uh, can i very quickly answer that because i think that's it's a wonderful question uh, that why don't we because we know that the government is cowardly it's not going to remove us why don't we protest against uh, you know things that we want to be corrected it's a very profound question in fact dr ambedkar after we got independence one of the most beautiful speeches he gave was the grammar of anarchy and uh, you know he was against he said now let's not resort to this satyagraha and gandhi's it's another matter that he was uh, you know he his views against gandhi were very clear so everything gandhi did he said is this thing but the fact of the matter is one of the saddest comments ever made in the last 10 years was not by any politician because they they are experts at it was by the supreme court during the farm protests that were going on and i think that typifies the way our Uh, you know the national consciences and how we we are conditioned to think one way it is the way of the anarchy the supreme court said that all we see are the people who are protesting against the farm laws where are the people who are for the farm laws we don't see them this was such a sad statement i was stunned leave alone an adult making it the supreme court of india what did the supreme court of india want that 250 million farmers leave farming in far flung telangana tamil nadu kerala walk or come by train to uh, uh, is it tilak marg and protest there that they are for the farm law is that how you want the country to run all of you are wealth creators your job is to create wealth create education wealth through education you have your jobs to do in a logical sane world intelligent people who are creating or doing something for the nation should never come on to the streets that is why i say we are a banana republic ever since we became a republic because we expect people decent people law abiding people people who are earning who are creating wealth for the nation to leave all that come on to the streets and protest something that should logically be given to them and the people who block roads who do these things are mostly unemployed leftists uh, mostly who studied from my university unfortunately <laughs> they are the ones who are celebrated they are the ones who, so street veto is winning nothing can be more defeating self defeating for a country just one point and i think there's a fundamental flawed premise in your argument the state is cowardly selectively yeah that's true yeah ram rahim you know yeah. if hindus were to sit there yeah, yeah yeah then the reaction of the state would be utter masculinity totally totally and if it's non hindus who are sitting there it is completely i'm sorry to say they surrender they go supine they say walk all over us not just that sai when mulayam singh 
ordered firing at Kar Sevak. Later on, he was proud of it. They won elections despite him saying that. Or when Indira Gandhi ordered the firing over sadhus for the cow agitation. The Hindu state, or rather the Indian state, sorry, not the Hindu state, is replete with these examples. So when, and this is regardless of governments, by the way, regardless of parties. So tell me, the other side knows one thing. If they are shot at, there is a cottage factory waiting to swing into motion, which therefore will create enough noise for the government to go on the back foot. One, you don't have the cottage factory. Second, you know for a fact you'll be caught alone. Three, you know that the government becomes even more, let's say, bold when it is the Hindu on the streets. So again, collective action is constantly uh, disincentivized by the fact that the, the Indian state finds its uh, sleeping masculinity only when the Hindu is on the streets. Nobody else. They entered the national capital of this country. They removed the Indian flag from Red Fort. They put another flag there. 400 policemen protecting all that were grievously injured. All the cases against the people who did it were taken off.